Okay, let's talk a little bit about microphones. As we know, microphones are the transducers in the beginning of the audio chain. They convert sound waves into electrical signals. So, based on this, we have several types of microphones. Let's see the most common of them. The most common kind of microphone is the dynamic one. The transduction process is based on electromagnetism. This means a group of magnets and coils. A big advantage of this system is that it doesn't require any kind of power source. So you just need to plug your microphone into your preamp or mixer and you are ready to go. They are very durable and resistant. So if you drop your microphone accidentally, it will work fine most of the times. They are relatively inexpensive compared to other kinds of microphones and they provide a good balanced sound. Not a lot of details in high frequencies, but good enough in most cases. This is why these microphones are very popular for vocals and musical instruments in general. They also do a great job on guitar amplifiers. Some classic examples are the Shure SM57, the 58, like the one in the picture, and the Beta series. Of course, there are many other very good brands and models, but if you want a reliable dynamic microphone, you should aim at least for an equivalent model of this. Another very common microphone is the capacitor or condenser microphone. It uses a capacitor instead of magnets and coils. And this is a great technology, but it requires external power to function. This power can come from batteries or, more commonly, from the audio mixer or preamp through the so-called phantom power which is a source of 48 volts that feeds the microphone. This is usually activated with a switch on the mixer, preamp, or audio interface. Most mixers have this feature nowadays. Condenser microphones are more delicate and expensive than dynamic ones. They offer excellent frequency response, lots of sound details, and a very good sensitivity. This means that they are able to capture very soft sounds that a dynamic microphone wouldn't do. This is why these microphones are the best choice for cymbals, strings, and also vocals when you want to capture the details of the sound. Among the most popular models, we have the Shure KSM9, the SM81, and the AKG414, shown in the picture. The third kind of microphone is the ribbon microphone. This is based on the electromagnetic principle as well. You should be very careful with these microphones though, as they can be severely damaged if fed with phantom power. This is not the case with dynamic microphones. They won't break with phantom power, but on the other hand, ribbon microphones will do. So these guys are delicate and expensive. They are more like a luxury for the audio engineer. This is why these are the least common of the three kinds. Anyway, they are popular because they capture the sound with smooth highs and a warmer sound than the other kinds of microphones. They sound very good on vocals, and actually they were created by the RCA broadcasting station, like the one in the picture, so they've been used for decades. They can work very well on instruments too. Some classic models are the Royer 121. So now you have a better idea of the pros and cons of different kinds of microphones. There are many other kinds of microphones, but they are not as common as this. It's very useful to have a mix of dynamic and condenser microphones in most professional situations.